Welcome back to another K5 adventure. I hope you're all doing well during this quarantine time. Today, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna be doing a crawfish boil. But like I said, since we're in a quarantine and there's a stay at home order, it's for us, it's very limited in ingredients as to what we can use because this is just basically what I had around the house that I could put in to make it a boil. Uh, but first, before we get started, I want to say thank you to my parents from Virginia who ordered these for us. My sister was ordering it for them uh, as a gift for us. So I want to say thank you to my parents and my sister for these crawfish that were uh, from Louisiana. Now I want to get started. So we got 30 pound sack. Now we're going to clean them. After running the water for an hour, it looks pretty clean. I think we're ready to go here with, with the crawfish. So I'm going to scoop it out into the strainer. So the strainer that I have is too small um, for the amount of crawfish that I have here, which is 30 pounds. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I, I, I don't want to overflow it because then the crawfish is going to start crawling out. Um, but what I'm hoping to do is uh, just have this and I'll, I'll drop it in the pot later and then I will pour the rest of this or put the rest of this um, on top of that. Hopefully once the crawfish uh, starts boiling that they will kind of um, uh, shrink down or, or, or a little bit or not shrink down but pack um, a, a little bit better. So we'll see how that works out. So the ingredients that we're going to put in the boils are three two quarts Sunny D juice, one eight ounce Corella seasoning, two bags of one pound Louisiana boil seasoning. All right, so what we have so far in here is just uh, water that I filled up less than halfway. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and add in three bottles of Sunny D. All right, to this, we're gonna add in um, four onions that were cut in half. Then I have a handful of bay leaves. For some spice, some, uh, some kick, I'm gonna add in uh, some dry pepper. Then I also have four lemon that were cut up into quarters that we're gonna squeeze and add in. And normally, what I would like to do is have mushrooms and potatoes and sausage, smoked sausage put in here. But like I said, we're in the middle of a quarantine, so um, ingredients and supplies are limited. So I'm just doing the best I can to, uh, to make this boil with the ingredients that we have um, around the house. All right, to this, we're gonna add now our seasoning. So 
so we added two pounds of the um, seasoning, the boil seasoning, Louisiana boil seasoning already. Now I'm gonna add uh, one whole container of this Corolla um, seasoning. All right, then we're gonna add two sticks of salted butter to this. Now we'll just mix it up, bring it to a boil, and then we'll drop the crawfish in. All right, so now that uh, the pot is, is boiling now, All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna drop the crawfish in into the pot. I guess that's gonna have to do. All right, from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to bring it back up to a rolling boil. Once that happens, we're gonna cook it for two minutes and then we're gonna turn off the heat and we're gonna let it soak. All right, now, now that we added all, all the crawfish in, my, like I said, my strainer is a little bit too small and all these are the extra ones that goes, goes on, on top. But what we gotta do now is bring it up to a rolling boil um, and cook it there for two minutes. In the meantime, while I wait, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and clean out my, uh, my cooler so that we can, uh, once the crawfish is done, we can put it in there and we can do our mixing with it. All right, we're back. It looks like, look like it's rolling boil. So from now, we're gonna cook it for two minutes. We're gonna set the timer and cook it for two minutes. And then we're gonna shut off the heat and let it soak. I already cleaned off the, um, the cooler while I was waiting. So once this is cooked, uh, boiled for two minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and then we're gonna let it soak for 15 minutes and then we're gonna take it out. Put it in the cooler, go inside, we're gonna make our kabang sauce and then we're gonna pour on top. See, this is the rolling boil. You can see it's bubbling underneath there. So from here, we're, we're gonna cook it for, for two minutes. And then we're gonna shut off the heat. So what I was saying before is that you can see the crawfish is uh, floating. See how it's on top? The pot, it doesn't want to go down. You have to like push it down. That means it's not soaked in yet. The crawfish isn't soaked in. It's, it's cooked, but there's no flavor and juice inside the shell yet. That's why it's still buoyant and it's floating. So once, once we get it soaked later, you'll see that um, it actually, it will actually sink down below the water like that. It smells so good. Can't wait to eat this. And normally, normally we would add um, sausage, potatoes, like I said, mushrooms. I love mushrooms in here too. It has a lot of flavor, but unfortunately, we can't get any um, right now. All right, so two minutes, it's up. What I'm gonna do now is shut off the heat. Turn off the heat. We are going to now just let it soak. I'm gonna put the lid back on and just let it soak. And 
you guys will see that once it's soaked in that the crawfish will actually sink down a little bit that means it's soaked in and then we'll we'll give it a little taste test to see um, if it needs to soak a little bit longer or if it's uh, ready to, to be uh, pulled out um, to be eaten. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the lid back on and we'll start the timer for 15 minutes. So usually at this stage we would have frozen corn, frozen shrimp or something to put in to help it cool the pot while it's soaking in but since we don't I'm going to go ahead and just use a garden hose and hose the side down to just kind of help help cool cool the pot down while we wait for our 15 minutes I know there's gadgets out there there's rigs that goes around you can connect the, the hose to um, you know to help it cool down a bit faster but I don't have one of those so this is the, the next best thing all right so I just kind of hosed it down for a few minutes just to reduce the temperature and then uh, so we still have about eight minutes worth left of uh, of soaking but as you can see by cooling it down some of the crawfish because before the lid when we put on it was kind of like a jar like this because everything was floating up but as you can see now now there's actually some room up top so that means it's starting to sink down so I just want to give this a little bit a little bit of mixing some of these top guys down to the bottom so it has a, a chance to get in some flavors too. I could still feel the crawfish being very buoyant and still floating a lot because I when I scoop down I feel there's a there's an air pocket still down there that means they're still they're still um, floating well, it's all right look it's uh, looks like it's now you can start seeing the water a little bit more Yep, it's starting to it's starting to sink. And again, this is a, a a critical step that you shouldn't skip. Don't rush through this now that it's cooked because you know you spend a lot of money in the seasoning for the for the crawfish in the boil, and if you don't let it get a chance to soak in, you're pretty much wasting your money um, in all the seasoning so don't rush the step this is the part that that is crucial to getting flavor inside the crawfish so we still have we still have a, a few minutes left for for the, the 15 minutes I, I generally like to try to to soak it for um, at least 15 minutes and um, just to get the flavor in but if it needs more if it needs more then I'll certainly leave it in there more but I think we have about three minutes left um, in our 15 minute soaking process so once once the 15 minutes um, comes up what, what I like to do is try to um, I'm gonna taste it to see if um, enough flavor has been soaked in to inside the crawfish um, and if that's the case then I will certainly remove the crawfish 
But if it's not, if it haven't been, or if not enough flavor has, has been soaked in, then I'll, I'll leave it for another few minutes, like maybe five minutes um, more or so. But uh, like I said, we, we still have a couple minutes left yet um, for these guys to, uh, to be soaked in. So uh, once that comes up, then uh, I'll, I'll do a t taste test. All right, so it's been 15 minutes now. Um, as you can see, that the, the crawfish is sunk down. You can feel how, how packed it is when, when, when you push on it. There's no giving on the bottom. So it's all packed in there. So you remember how I was saying that once it's soaked in, that the crawfish will kind of be cut below um, the, uh, at the water line. Whereas before it was kind of like, you know, up here where you can push down here, there you can feel that it's, it's already packed. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to pull one up and and I want to um, give it a little taste test to see. Pull one of this guy up here. Ooh, it's hot. Ooh, it's hot. But let me see if the flavor is in already. But it's cooked perfectly. Mm. Some of the flavors there. Let me check the head. I think I would prefer a little bit more, more flavor in there. some flavor in the in the head yep yeah I think I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it for another five minutes because there are flavors in there but I prefer to have more flavor inside like I said um, spent a lot of money on the seasoning and I don't want to go to waste so I'm gonna tr maximize as much flavor in there um, as I can so I'm gonna leave it for another five minutes before I pull it out it's, it's been five minutes uh, extra for the soaking. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to scoop some of the crawfish out just so that I can have room to be able to maneuver uh, the, the strainer a little bit better. So again, this uh, cooler was already washed. What I'm going to do now is just going to try to scoop some of this out just so that I could get the um, get to the handle of the strainer. We'll rest on here for a little bit try to drain as much of the liquid out as possible and then we'll pour it into the, the cooler and we'll take it inside and pour our uh, kabang sauce on there all right so now that uh, most of the liquid has been drained off I'm gonna go ahead and, and pour it into the, the, the cooler All right, so from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside, make our kabang sauce, and then we'll pour it on top. All right, for kabang sauce, what I have here is one large onion, the size of a uh, softball that is uh, diced up, four clove of garlic that is diced. We're gonna mix the seasoning together three tablespoons of obey, one tablespoon of cayenne pepper, one tablespoon of paprika, one tablespoon of lemon pepper. I just happen to have these. You can use what, whatever brand you like. And one tablespoon of garlic. So it's 
three tablespoon, one, 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 and one. We'll mix it all together. All right, from here we're gonna add four sticks of butter to make our uh, kabang sauce. Pot is a little hot, but it's okay. These are uh, salted butter that I'm adding in. Okay, so the butter is boiling now. What I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of water. This is probably like a quarter, quarter of a cup of water that I'm gonna add to it. That will help the, the butter from uh, not solidifying so easily. As, as a dipping sauce, when you take it out and you start eating it, um, sometimes it just congealed so, so easily. So that, that'll help. And obviously the, um, the onions that we're gonna add in in a little bit, that's gonna have some water once we cook it up too. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and, and bring that to a boil. All right, so now that the butter is boiling, what I'm gonna do is add in the diced onion and garlic that we had earlier into this. So we'll bring this up to a boil again, and then we'll add in the seasoning mixture that we uh, mixed up earlier. Now that the butter is cut, has come to a rolling boil, what I'm gonna do is add the spices that we uh, mixed up earlier into the, the pot. And kabang! We have our sauce. So let it boil for a little bit. It smells really good. You can smell the garlic and the seasoning mixed in with like that buttery smell. I have, I'm gonna add like half teaspoon of brown sugar into there. Mix it up and we are all set to pour over our crawfish. But first, we're gonna um, save some aside as a dipping sauce. Now I'm gonna save uh, some of the sauce aside so that uh, we can use as a dipping sauce. And the rest we're gonna pour onto our crawfish. Ooh, still eating. All right, so what we do is put this aside. And we are going to pour our kabang sauce on top of this now. This is what makes it good. We go the extra step to pouring this on and then we're gonna shake it up and this is in my opinion what gives, makes it to go the extra mile to make it taste better because now it's gonna coat on the, on the outside of it. So we're gonna shake it up. All right, here we go. Woo! So the garlic butter sauce. is coating the outside. You can see the crawfish having that glisten of the garlic butter sauce on the outside. All right, it's ready for serving.
Alright guys, thank you so much for following another K5 adventure. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Comment down below. And until then, enjoy some crawfish. See ya!